Part of becoming an AI-first company and an AI-first leader means thinking about how can I use AI to accomplish this everywhere, in the entire business and in the entire customer journey from marketing to sales to onboarding to success, which we're going to talk about today, to kind of the end of the customer with you. And I just implemented something that I'm honestly really proud of, but also I hope you can take some inspiration from to go do something like this in your business. So I was laying in bed last night and I couldn't sleep because I think about AI and I think about development and I think about what this is all happening in our world right now. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna open up the doors to Linkberry, my LinkedIn AI writing tool. Uh, you can check it out, linkberry.ai, link in the description below uh, to get on the wait list. We're going to have customers really soon. And I don't want to have to be answering a bunch of customer support tickets. I love my customers. But uh, if a customer emails your business, it means they've already kind of failed with your product. And so I was thinking, how can I get knowledge-based articles and support and a way to have a customer support AI agent service my customers 24-7, 365 so they get answers right away. I don't have to think about it, and I have happier customers because they get good answers on time when they need them all the time, and it's not relying on me. It's a win-win-win for everybody, but you have to have a bunch of context and content for an agent to be successful with. And so I had this, and so I had this prompt in Claude Code, literally from my phone at like two o'clock in the morning last night, <laughs> uh, and this is what I said. Build a knowledge base that will act as the source of data for help centers for our users. This will live at slash support in our application and will resemble the standard SaaS knowledge base area. Ensure that all common user stories are covered, including but not limited to creating an account, resetting a password, free trial policy, blah, 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 blah. And I said, there's probably dozens more. Everything you can imagine a customer would email customer support about, create a knowledge base doc for it. By the way, this is what we have at my business at Castos. So castos.com, uh, if you go to support.castos.com, there is dozens of articles that our team there manages all the time. Uh, since we're starting from scratch and we're taking a very AI first approach to all of this, I'm just having the thing that knows the most about my product right now, which is Claude, uh, to do this for me. Process will um, will go like this, right? Uh, brainstorm and list all user stories, actions a customer uh, could take regarding the application and potential questions they could ask. List those and group by area. These are called categories. Loop through each category and topic you created and write a detailed human-facing knowledge base article on the topic. Uh, and then four, interlink between related articles where it makes sense. Include this, uh, include search on the slash support page. And then uh, if successful, this knowledge base would have the answers to everything a user would ask, a support rep, or a support agent in the future. Build this in such a way that it's easily maintainable and updatable and an AI agent could interface to it. So this means like structured data, really clear tagging, things like that. So I fired this off from my phone uh, at like two o'clock in the morning last night because I just couldn't sleep. And it did it, and it did a great job. And in this video, we're gonna walk through what the actual implementation of this was, how we're gonna take this and maintain it from here because knowledge base is only as valuable as the accuracy of it. And so you might be wondering like, how the heck can like Claude Code write hundreds of, because like 200 knowledge base articles that it wants to write. How can it do that? How can it update it? How can it keep it accurate? I'm gonna walk through my plan for this and then how we're gonna build an agent that can talk to this uh, and be like customer facing in the application anytime they want it, okay? So it said, hey, I'm gonna go do all this stuff. It has this to-do list. So it's gonna understand the code base, brainstorm and categorize user stories, design the knowledge base, create database migration, build API, implement search functionality, create a front end for the slash support page, uh, write the knowledge base articles, add interlinking and test. Uh, so it did this, it went away and did all this stuff it has all of these categories and all of these knowledge base articles in the categories, and and we're gonna we're gonna pull this down and we're gonna run this code in just a minute. Um, so it has all of these categories, has sixteen different categories, and two hundred and seven knowledge base articles across sixteen categories. Pretty cool database structure. Uh, this will live in the application. And you might be like, hey, Craig, you should have this run as a microservice. You don't have to like deploy actual code every time you wanna do this. I'm not worried about it. It's gonna run as an agent and automatically look at what it should be updating 
on a regular basis. So I'm not worried about like, I shouldn't ever have to go do this. Um, if I need to, I can just go in the database. Okay, and it's gonna have a link in the product in the navigation area. So it created a database migration thing for us and we'll bring this down and we'll run the migration with the Subbase MCP. Uh, okay, so it has the database schema, has API endpoints, it has the slash support category and article and slug. It has the 16 categories and it started writing the first few uh, articles because it's just way too many articles for it to write at once, okay? So this is pretty cool. Um, and so did 15 articles so far. Okay, pretty cool. So let's let's copy the branch name. So if we look in GitHub, this is on this branch, okay? So it's on this branch right now. We're gonna pull this branch down, we're gonna run it, and then we're gonna make sure it works great, and then we're gonna deploy it, okay? So let's open up cursor and inside Claude. So first we're gonna clear the context window because we're working on some other stuff before this. And so first we're gonna say git status, just because I'm not sure. I think we're on the main branch, but I just wanna be sure and I wanna make sure that the main branch is clear. Uh, okay, so we just restarted Claude. Um, git status, uh, we're on the main branch. Okay, cool. So now let's say switch to All right, so basically saying, I wanna to switch to this branch of code and run it, right? Cool, so it's gonna pull this, all this code that we that Claude code wrote, all of this stuff. All, it's gonna pull all of this down onto our machine here and we're on this branch. Cool, so now let's make sure the server's running. Server's not running. Let's make sure the server runs. Uh, cool, oh, uh, what we need to do is run the database migrations. So the subbase migrations are here. So mm, let's see, let's get the list of those. Yeah, just because we're nice. They should be able to run these. Okay, so it's gonna run these migrations. And again, my running migrations is like adding tables or columns to a spreadsheet, right? A database is like a really big fancy spreadsheet. Uh, and so it's going to be adding the structure for the data to go in. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so it's using the SUP base MCP, and an MCP is just like a connector tool uh, to connect our application and in this uh, and Claude code actually uh, as the tool to SUP base to do things like database migrations. Okay, so it's five different migrations. So it's going to create the knowledge base. It's going to create uh, categories. It's going to create articles. Articles part two, because there's two, uh, there's like 200 of them. So it has to break this in two pieces and then links to the articles. Uh, do I want to approve? Yes, I'm not gonna man uh, automatically approve this because running database migrations is kind of a tricky thing. Uh, I always want to manually approve these. I'm just like, I'll YOLO most of <laughs> what Claude code does, but, uh, but probably not that. All right, clean this up a little bit while we're doing this. Okay, so we're gonna run these five database migrations and this will just take a few minutes. All right, so did the first one. And while it's doing this, let's just take a look at the application here. Cool, and do we have, oh, help and support. Cool, okay, so we already have the support page. Pretty cool, you know, we're still running the database migrations. It's really not really fair. Oh, cool, okay, by category. Uh, okay, so this is like already, this is already like half done, right? We have search and we have categories. This probably won't work because we don't have these categories here yet. Okay, cool. Um, so we're about, so it just built the categories, that's cool. So now it's gonna build the actual articles. And you know, one of the things while this is running that I'm thinking about is I'm gonna put this on some kind of a schedule. So, you know, maybe it's like a check every time we run a production deploy, check the area that was affected and see if you need to update any of the knowledge base articles. That's pretty much what I would like to do. Uh, so while we're, while we're waiting, I'm gonna come over here to GitHub and make a note for myself, uh, just cause this is what I like to do is make notes in GitHub, run KB update anytime a production deploy. Create a automation or workflow that anytime there's a production deploy, it fires an agent that analyzes the areas of the code that were updated and looks to see if it needs to update the knowledge base documentation accordingly. So you see where we're getting at from like a mindset perspective here is like if we do this and get this right, 
we just never have to think about knowledge base and the vast majority of customer support, like the vast majority. Um, it's gonna create better, happier customers and less work for us, which is kind of the whole part of the whole point of AI. Okay, so it's still running this migration. Must be, it must be a pretty big migration here. So we come back to the application, see if we can see any articles yet, nope. And so, you know, this just gets the part of the reason I was so excited. I thought about this. I was like, yeah, this is so cool. And then I was like, what else can I do? <laughs> what else can I do around this? So if you follow the channel, you'll know we had this, uh, this like Claude Code project called SEO Machine. Well, I'm, I'm kind of working in the background. And I have to tell you, I'm kind of working in the background on this <laughs> to just like completely automate the process of content creation. So research, strategy, outline, execution, posting, all entirely automated. There might need to be human in the loop for a while, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to be responsible for kicking off the event because that's really where like me as a human, I just fall down where I'm like, I got stuff to do. I want to go hang out with my kids. I want to go hang out with my wife. I want to have date night with my wife. Maybe <laughs> like I want to do stuff. I want to have like at worst, like a list of things that I know I have to work on. Right. And so that would be way more helpful than like, oh my gosh, what, how are we going to do marketing? Instead, I'm going to come in and say, okay, do this one and then do this one and do this one. And I just approve it and it goes off and it's published. That, that would be way better. And so this is the mindset that I'm taking into this venture that, that, I mean, AI didn't exist when I started Castos. So just, uh, it's a different path for us there. Um, which is also why I'm excited about like showcasing AI and a new product because we get to make all these decisions from scratch. Cool, okay, so these articles populated. What is LinkBerry and how does it work? Uh, is an AI powered LinkedIn consecration? Okay, um, like you're not a robot. How da, 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 da. Cool. You know, this is not formatted great. I love this. Was this helpful or not? I love this. This is like a standard thing of, of help desk uh, places. I would suppose this is, because you can tell this is rich text, right? This is bolded and stuff. I would say if we look at the page source here, yeah, we just need to give some spacing, right? Because this is really pretty uh, markup. We just need to, to format this a little better. So that's cool. We can, we can do this um, after the fact. We don't have to like redo all of these articles. I was kind of worried about that. Let's go look at um, understanding the seven day free trial. Uh, you have access to all this stuff. Yep, cool, okay. Uh, sorry, let's go back. Let's go to another category, uh, interviews, do we have? Yeah, cool. I mean, to be fair, like to be absolutely fair, like uh, screenshots would be really helpful in here. Uh, I bet we can automate that with Playwright. Uh, I bet we could say, hey, this is an article. Uh, go through this process right here, how it works. Start an interview, answer questions complete the interview and generate posts. I bet Playwright can figure that out. That would be super cool. And then it can take a screenshot, it can store it in the database, and then we can just reference that. Okay, so it's gonna run these last two migrations. Do I wanna do this? Yes. Uh, and so like all of these categories should have articles in them now. Oh, not yet, okay. So it's still running that migration. And it knows, right? It knows everything. This, this we just did yesterday. And it knows the whole schedule for the 30 day content calendar. You know, we need to tweak the formatting here a little bit because this is not exactly right, but I'll probably use Playwright because Playwright it gives Claude Code eyes, right? To, it can see kind of what's going on here um, for it to for it to more easily update the, the formatting of these. Do I want to proceed? You bet your bottom I do. Okay, so now it's going to enter link in between articles. And so we'll see if we can get a good example of that when it's done. But anyways, like, I think the application of this is really cool. This is literally like a one shot thing. But much more importantly, it's the mindset of when I want to go do a thing. And you're like, dread, because you're like, Oh, my gosh, I'm gonna have to like hire a person and get like an in email inbox and like, answer customer support problems and all this kind of stuff. Like, I don't want to do like, I don't want to do that. And, and like customers shouldn't have to have that in their life, right? Like they should be able to come in here, see what's going on here and, and like bounce around these articles and get the questions, get their questions answered. Like they should just be able to do that. And like now they can. So I, I'm super jazzed about this. I think this is really cool. 
I think there's some work to be done here. Still, so let's put in um, trial. And let's make sure search works. Oh, let's go. All right, so trial, you know, search works too. One shot, literally one shot. I put this in my phone as I'm laying in bed at two in the morning, not being able to sleep. And, and it just did it. It's pretty amazing. So if we go look at the database, we can look at refresh. If we go look at data, ah, so database uh, article feedback, that's the, did you like this or not? So if we go look at an article, oh, no articles there. Oh, I don't think, I don't think it created all the articles yet. Okay. So, you know, was this, this is like, was it helpful or not? So we have that in the database. We have links. Uh, so it's linking between articles. That's cool. Article versions. Ooh, we have version control in here. That's crazy. Uh, we have the articles themselves. Pretty amazing. We have a lot more articles than this. I wonder, I wonder where the rest of the articles came from. Cause we definitely, and then these are the 16 categories. So like, Again, you, you know, it's the it's the philosophy and the mindset of this as much as the implementation. I freaking love the implementation for where we are, where we're going to be onboarding early access customers like later this week. It's amazing to have a pretty full knowledge base out already. Is it perfect? No. Do we need to work on the formatting? Yeah. For 15 minutes of work, is it incredible? Yeah, heck yeah, right? Uh, and so I just want you to take this mindset away and then the next time you're gonna go do something with work and your application and your marketing and your sales, say, hey, how can I hire AI to do this and take an approach kind of like this? I think you'd be amazed with the outcome and just like I was here. If you wanna check out Linkberry, it's linkberry.ai. Join the waitlist list and we're inviting folks to check out the product and see how you can create an entire month of LinkedIn content in about three minutes with Linkberry.